हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड ओपन लर्निंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन माय थर्ड लेक्चर सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अ टॉपिक ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर बीए मॉड्यूल 2 दैट इज ट्रेंड्स इन इंडियन नेशनलिज्म पार्ट बी as i have already started with the topic extremism this is the second part of b and we are going to study about the extremist or uh, we are going to continue with the topic in this part again friends uh, this topic is quite lengthy and therefore we i was forced to divide this topic into three parts and so this is the second part of the topic and uh, i hope now you are well acquainted with with my name and with my voice so i am dr suvarna jadhav from bk birla college kalyan so to begin with today we are going to start the most unwanted thing especially for the indians and that is partition of bengal that took place in 1905 we must understand friends that this was the worst thing that lord curzon could have done with india so the partition of bengal in 1905 marked the beginning of the militant nationalism in india the province of bengal included the whole of bengal bihar and orissa according to curzon the existing province was too large this is what he said especially from the effective administration point of view so what he said was that he issued an order on 26 july 1905 dividing the province of bengal into two parts a new province having the muslim majority was created consisting of east bengal and parts of assam with dhaka as its capital we must understand friends that this was the clear vision of lord curzon of divide and rule policy so this we have to keep in our mind the rest of the bengal including bihar and orissa had the hindu majority although the administration was projected as the reason yet we can say that curzon's policy was to divide and rule friends we can see the map of partition of bengal 1905 over here the colors and everything it clearly depicts how bengal was divided into two these are some of the glimpses of partition of bengal 1905 you can see that many people migrated from one part of bengal to another We now come to the next point that is Swadeshi and boycott movement. The Bengalis first reacted to the partition of Bengal on 7th August 1905. The meeting was conducted at the Town Hall Calcutta. The resolution was passed at this meeting on boycott of British goods with a war cry Bande Mataram. the partition day that is on 16th october 1905 this was the day which was observed as a national mourning day there was general hartal the nationalist felt that the partition was the naked manifestation of the british policy of divide and rule the anti partition agitation included boycott and burning of foreign goods and promotion of swadeshi and national education the poets like rabindranath tagore rajnikant sen and mukunda das wrote patriotic songs which were composed and sung some of the glimpses of swadeshi and boycott movement you can see over here friends right so over here we can see that how lord curzon ordered the partition of bengal on 16th october 
you can see that how people traveled in the train at that time and you can also see how the government policy is shown over here as divide and rule policy we can also see some more glimpses of swadeshi and boycott movement you can see the uh, the uh, burning uh, whole pyre wherein we can see that the clothes were burned the foreign goods were burned talking more about the swadeshi and boycott movement it was bal gangadhar tilak who led the swadeshi movement in western india he organized a huge bonfire of foreign cloth at pune he opened cooperative stores as a part of the swadeshi movement the mill owners were asked to supply dhotis at moderate rates The Swadeshi Weaving Company was established at Pune in Punjab we can see Lala Lajpat Rai led the movement against the use of foreign sugar the merchants and brahmins showed their refusal to imported goods Chidambaram Pille founded the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company in Tuticorin in Madras the boycott movement had two objectives friends the first one was if the british manufacturers found no market that would affect them adversely and secondly it was if import of british manufactured goods was stopped it would encourage the sale of indian goods and contribute to promote swadeshi we further see that tilak regarded swadeshi movement as an economic movement the chief feature of boycott and swadeshi movement were boycott of british manufactured goods such as cloth sugar and salt burning of british manufactured goods in public places picketing of shops selling foreign goods including liquor promotion promotion of indian industries i'm sorry over here we need to correct it is promotion of indian industries or swadeshi the swadeshi movement gave encouragement to the indian industries the swadeshi movement achieved an all india character towards the end of 1905 although this movement affected the british merchants but it not affect the british government politically however the intensity of the movement declined the british government suppressed the militant nationalist group they banned the political activities what was the differences between the moderates and the extremists let us see that the differences between the moderates and the extremists became more visible through their anti partition movement the moderates in bombay were against the idea of boycott although they supported the swadeshi movement gk gk gokhale insisted use of the word swadeshi the fundamental difference in the ideology of the moderates and the extremists was the difference in their political goal and the method to achieve it the extremists interpreted swaraj to mean complete autonomy whereas the prominent moderate like gopal krishna gokhale said only mad men outside lunatic asylums could think or talk of independence he further says there is no alternative to british rule not only now but for a long time to come however the differences became hostile let us now see what actually happened in the calcutta congress 1906 the differences between moderates and extremists became more hostile when the question of nomination of name of president was to be chosen for the 
session of Indian National Congress. The extremists proposed the name of Tilak and moderates opposed to it. However, the question was solved by choosing Dadabhai Nauroji as both moderates and extremists respected him. In this session, four resolutions were passed. One was Swadeshi, second was Boycott, third was National Education and fourth was Self-Government Demands. Throughout 1907, the two sides fought over the interpretations of the four resolutions. The extremists were in favour of carrying the movement of boycott and Swadeshi beyond Bengal. While the moderates did not go beyond the constitutional means to achieve their goals, whereas the extremists took a step back as they wanted Congress to be an instrumental to fight against the British. Friends, you can see over here in this picture, this is a rare picture wherein we can see that uh, Lokmanya Tilak is seen here taking a bath while at the same time discussing the proceedings with Antu Kaka Pandis. We can also see Dadabhai Navroji for the first time who spoke about complete Swarajya during this session. Let us now talk about the split in the Surat Congress 1907. In 1907, it was proposed by the extremists that the session should be held at Nagpur as they had a strong hold there. The due, due to this pressure from moderates, the venue was shifted to Surat as it was a safe zone for the moderates. There was also the disputes on who should be the president for the session. The extremists wanted Lala Lajpat Rai to be the president, whereas the moderates nominated Ras Bihari Ghosh. However, the Surat Congress of 1907 ended in a split between the moderates and the extremists led by Gokhale and Tilak respectively. The moderates immediately organized a convention adopted the following constitution. The extremists considered this constitution as an attempt to keep them out of the Congress. Some of the glimpses that you can see of the split in the Surat Congress in 1907. Friends, you can see over here, Lokmanya Tilak is sitting over here. In this, he's standing. Yes. And he is addressing to the gathering over there. Let us see how the government continued with the repression. The split in the Surat session in the Congress led to a massive attack on the extremists by the government. It passed the Seditious Meeting Act in 1907 and the Indian Press Act in 1910. The government suppressed the extremist newspapers. Tilak was arrested on charge of seditious writings in the Kesri and was sent to the Mandale jail for six years in 1908. Orbindu Ghosh was involved in a revolutionary conspiracy case and immediately after being judged innocent gave up politics and escaped to Pondicherry to take up religion. Vipin Chandrapal temporarily retired from politics Lala Lajpat Rai left for England in 1908. In 1909, he went to United States for an extended stay. However, the extremists could not continue their struggle. These are some of the glimpses that you can see, friends, over here. This is the picture showing the Mandale Jail. Let us talk about the Morley Minto reforms in 1909. The British government introduced the Morley Minto reforms through the Indian Councils Act 1909. The act increased the number of elected members in the Imperial Legislative Council 
and provincial legislative councils the real purpose of the morley minto reforms uh, one thing i would like to say over your friends that in some of the reference books you can also read the same reforms as minto morley reforms but it is it is absolutely right in that way also or you can also say morley minto reforms as i have mentioned over here so we can see was to divide the nationalist rank and check the growing unity among indians by encouraging the growth of muslim communalism the reforms introduced the system of separate electorates under which the muslims could only vote for the muslim candidates in constituencies especially reserved for them let us see what was congress in between the period of um, like 1910 to 1914 the period between august 1905 and the beginning of 1910 was full of events that changed the course of indian history the four and a half years that followed till august 1914 were relatively uneventful the extremist leaders were scattered and their party broken the reforms introduced by the morley minto reforms were a hoax a tranquility during these years was due to the conciliatory policies adopted by lord hardings hardings revoked the partition of bengal and transferred the seat of the government from calcutta to delhi in 19 11 we are now coming to the last part of this particular lecture and that is first world war 1914 18 and the congress the outbreak of the first world war in august 1914 gave a new lease of life to the national movement being a colony of the british india was dragged into the war In 1914 the Indian National Congress was still under the control of the moderates the moderates felt that they had more to gain through cooperation than opposition the Indian National Congress decided to support the british in their war efforts not only as a matter of duty but also to extract some concessions from them Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi who had just returned from South Africa also offered full cooperation to the British Lokmanya Tilak was released from prison and even he extended his support to the British in their war against Germany so friends i have completed your second part i hope all of you have understood this particular part and wish that you will follow me in the third part of the same topic so thank you so much thank you